Hello Internet and welcome to this video about the American traitor named James Wilkinson. Now, why do I want to talk about James Wilkinson? Well, because, like I said, he is, to my opinion, the sort of original American traitor. Now, people usually would put Benedict Arnold, of course, in that position, and they're fairly obvious choice why, but however, in my opinion, and I know several of my American friends will probably kick my ass right now, Arnold was as much betrayed by America as he ever betrayed them. So yeah, I can absolutely understand why Arnold did what he did. Wilkinson was just a twerp, to be perfectly honest, or to quote uh, Teddy Roosevelt, in all our history, there has never been such a despicable character. So yeah, people don't like him. And I will tell you why. Um, also because I want to get back to talking about America, because I'm going there very soon and I haven't done it in a while. So there we go. Um, this is going to be a new kind of video because for the first time in quite a while I've actually done a real script. So I want to see how that goes. So apologies in advance if it sounds like I'm reading stuff out because at times I might actually be reading stuff out. <laughs> but on the other hand it might also be better. But anyway, let's get on with it. The original American traitor, James Wilkinson. Enjoy! So... Who was James Wilkinson? Because I don't think a lot of people actually remember him today. Well, he was born in Maryland in 1757. Now, later sources sometimes claim that he came from an impoverished family and worked his way up uh, from there, but in fact his family was actually quite well off, or at least relatively wealthy. Um, it's true they had been a lot more wealthy in his grandfather's days than in his father, but they could still afford you know, to keep a plantation and per keep a successful business and also to make sure that James, who was the second son of the family, had private tutors in-house. So, obviously, they can't have been all that bad off. Um, later, he managed to study medicine at the University of Philadelphia, but unfortunately, his studies were rudely interrupted by the American uh, Revolution or the... Um, yeah, well, the American Revolution, so stupid Brits. Uh, in around 1778, when he was uh, 21, he married a girl by the name of Anne Biddle in Philadelphia, and the couple had about four children. She died in 1807, and in 1810, he married another uh, girl by the name of Celeste Trudeau, with whom he had another three children. Uh, included in those were a pair of twin daughters, of which Theophany uh, was one of them and was his favourite child. She died in 1822 at the age of only six and her death took a great toll on him, so much so that some people claim that it might even have, you know, contributed to his own death a few years later in 1825. Before his death, however, he had reached the rank of Major General in the Army of the United States and was Senior Officer of the Army twice and Governor of Lu the Louisiana Territory at one point as well. Senior Officer of the Army was at that time basically the commander or highest ranking officer of the United States Army, so the commander of the United States military forces on land, basically, since they didn't really have a commander-in-chief title at that particular moment. Well, as I said, after his studies had been so rudely interrupting by the uh, breakout of war, he fairly quickly, Mr. Wilkinson, entered the war on the American side and joined Thompson's Pennsylvania Rifle Battalion in 1775. And uh, later in that year, he received a commission directly into the army as a captain, serving as an aide to Nathaniel Green during the Siege of Boston. After the British evacuated Boston, he went with the army to New York, where he left the service of Green. Who knows what would have happened if he stayed with him, and instead was given command of an infantry company. That company was sent to Canada to reinforce the uh, army of Benedict Arnold, who was conducting the siege of Quebec. Arnold, of course, at that time still being a very respected general in the Continental Army and 
maybe even the best general they had. Unfortunately, when Wilkinson arrived, the British had only just a few days been before been reinforced with around 8,000 troops under the command of a very experienced general by the name of John Burgoyne, and the Americans basically had to, well, withdraw. We won't want to say run away, but they withdrew. They performed a tactical withdrawal. Um, Wilkinson uh, also, at that particular point, served as an aide to Arnold, and they left uh, Quebec on the last ship the Americans sailed out from there together. However, only upon arriving back at New York, he left the service of Arnold, so his career was not tarnished by Benedict Arnold's later betrayal of uh, the Continental uh, forces. Instead, he became an aide to Horatio Gates. One day I might also do a video on Horatio Gates, because Gates was basically the one who got Benedict Arnold into trouble by trying to steal his glory. Uh, actually did steal his glory. Um, but as an aide to General Gates, he participated, of course, also with Benedict Arnold in the Bar Battle of Sar Saratoga, which was, of course, a rather important victory by the Americans. Um... Mostly due to Benedict Arnold's efforts. However, Gates claimed uh, that it was him that had won the battle and sent Wilkinson off to Congress to report upon the outcome of the battle. Wilkinson was not in any real hurry, however, as he had to take some private business uh, dealings first. But when he finally did show up in Congress, he took the opportunity, I mean... He was working for Horatio Gates, after all, to improve on the story of his own efforts in the battle and basically took, cre cre ah, basically took credit for the result achieved by quite a few other officers, as well as, you know, he had that letter from Gates praising him, and Gates had already basically taken uh, credit for the entire uh, thing, so this resulted in Wilkinson being promoted to Brevet Brigadier General. At this point, he was of not quite 20 years old yet, which meant that he was promoted ahead of several older and a lot more experienced officers, and this was the point where he first started to get very, very, very unpopular amongst certain Continental Army officers. However, the next year, in 1776, he fought in the battles of Trenton and Princeton directly under George Washington, and with Washington's support, he was, at the age of 20, appointed secretary to the Board of War in September of 1777. So, yeah, he had risen high very quickly. However... At this point, he had a fallout with Gates, uh, and Gates eventually had enough of Wilkinson and made him resign his post in March of 1778. Wilkinson then retaliated by uh, pretending to be part of the Conway Cabal and telling George Washington all about it. The Conway Cabal was a uh, conspiracy that was meant to replace George Washington with uh, said Horatio Gates. Um, Washington then had Gates replaced from his particular army position, and uh, instead, since, of course, Wilkinson also had to retire from his position, had him placed as clothier general of the Army of Congress, which basically meant that he was responsible for the, um, well, the uniforms uh, regarding the Continental Army, a uh, job that would later be performed by the quartermaster general, but back then he was the clothier general. He held that for about two years until he resigned his position officially due to his lack of aptitude for the job. However, we are basically assuming today that he was forced out because he was horribly corrupt, and since he was responsible for a lot of funds to buy uniforms, there was a lot of chance to being corrupt. It perhaps says something about the man that he would rather be kicked out for being incompetent than for being, you know, corrupt one way or the other. After leaving his position, and in fact leaving the army at that point, he moved to Pennsylvania and was in fact uh, eventually elected to the Legislati Legislative Assembly of Pennsylvania, but in 1784 he moved on to what is uh, then known, or what is now Kentucky, but was then known simply as the Kentucky District, and settled near Louisville, although he soon bought some uh, 
rather large tract of land north of the Kentucky River and inadvertently basically founded the um, city of Frankfurt, which is, of course, the modern day state capital by building a rather large and successful plantation at that particular point and uh, having the city grow up around it. Now, a bit of backstory. Spain at this time, of course, controlled what was later uh, uh, taken over by France and then sold to America, namely the Mississippi um, district or the Mississippi basin. Basically, they controlled a huge tract of territory, almost a third of the United States today, ruled from what is modern-day New Orleans area and stretching all the way up to the Canadian border. It was a huge, huge, huge territory, which was, of course, what caused America to take its first steps towards superpower when Benjamin Franklin managed to purchase it for uh, America in around 1804. However, because, of course, the uh, Mississippi River system was such a huge trade area, the Spains kept very close control over who was allowed to trade there, who was allowed to travel there. Hell, Americans couldn't even travel down the, down the river without special permit. Wilkinson, however, managed to see an opportunity. So in 1787, he went down to uh, uh, Louis uh, Louisiana Territory to talk to uh, the local Spanish governor there and returned with a agreement that made Kentucky the exclusive rights holder to any kind of American trade along the Mississippi River. This, of course, made Wilkinson very rich and, of course, made Wilkinson also very popular. However, there were more to do about that particular t uh, deal than it just now meets the eye, but we will get back to that. Remember what I said about treason people, but as I said, we will get back to that. However, uh, in February 1788, he returned to Kentucky from that particular trip, and being so very popular because of that new agreement, he argued uh, viciously against the new constitution for the fledgling United States, because Kentucky had applied for statehood, and Wilkinson was sure that such a decision would be postponed until the new constitution was ratified. And he was right, so, you know the state district didn't actually achieve state rights until 1792. In the meantime, Wilkinson advocated for a new idea that Kentucky should form a union with Spain and just basically leave the United States, but couldn't get general support for this. Um, even, of course, though his argument was that with his new trade agreement, the inhabitants of Kentucky could get a huge market for their trade goods in New Orleans and New Spain and so on. However, the people of Kentucky rejected the idea, despite Wilkinson enjoying enormous respect in the area. He was, in fact, um, elected president of the Seventh Assembly of the Kentucky Convention, and again argued that Kentucky should, if not join with Spain, at least officially succeed from uh, Virginia, and, of course, eventually it finally happened, and uh, Kentucky gained statehood in 1792, though he continued to argue that it would be a better idea if we just seceded from the United States altogether and joined with Spain. Of course, at this point, people started to wonder exactly what it was he had with Spain, but we'll get back to that. Now, in 1785, the United States had become embroiled in what is today known as the Little Turtles War, or the Northwest Indian War, or the Battle for Ohio, or whatever you want to call it. It was a war between the United States on one side, and a somewhat loose confederation of about 20 tribes of Native Americans called the Western Confederacy on the other. It was basically a... A war about who should control Ohio and parts of Indiana and modern day Illinois, the uh, well, the whites or the Indians. And the war lasted until 1794 and ended, of course, in American victory. However, in 1791, Wilkinson accepted an appointment as a uh, lieutenant colonel in the regular army in order to get back and fight in that particular war since the Spanish scheme had not yet turned out to be as profitable as he wanted. 
fighting well and successfully at the head of a um, force of Kentucky volunteers, he was eventually placed in charge of the 2nd U.S. Infantry Regiment of Regular Troops and was once again promoted to Brevet Brigadier General, was in fact under consideration for a role as commanding officer of the entire U.S. Army when that army was being reorganized as something called the Legion of the United States, but instead uh, Congress choose a fellow by the name of Anthony Wayne, mainly because, again, no one really liked or trusted James Wilkinson. Now, Wilkinson continued his service, however, and commanded the right flank during the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794, which proved to be the last winning battle of the war. However, he spent a lot more time uh, and energy trying to create distrust against Mr. Anthony Wayne, uh, be, you know, both amongst the men of the army and the politicians in charge in Washington at the time, writing several letters to George Washington himself, protesting against Wayne and his decisions during the battle, even if the battle was actually a great and successful victory that won the war. So yeah, basically Wilkinson was very busy plotting to become leader of the army himself rather than Wayne without waiting for Wayne to step down, but he didn't really have much luck at the time. However, in 1796 he was made Commandant of Detroit, which was back then a very important military posting as it was sort of the defense in the northwest of then America and... um gained huge fame and popularity when he basically stamped out not a rebellion against America in the area, but a sort of... Mm, there was political and popular unrest, and he managed to basically stamp it out. And when General Wayne died late in 1796, Wilkinson was then appointed senior officer of the army. As I said, it kind of corresponds to modern-day chief of uh, staff of the American army, but not really... He was supreme commander of the army, but the army was, of course, really small. And, well, again, he was he was highest ranking military commander at that particular time. Uh, and he held that title, on, of course, until George Washington stepped down as president to return to the army. Because Washington still held the, ti the rank of lieutenant general. So he naturally, one would say, immediately stepped in as uh, supreme commander. Um, once Washington died the next year, uh, Wilkinson might have hoped to come back, but it was in fact superseded by Alexander Hamilton, who had held the uh, rank of Major General, and since he no longer served as uh, Secretary of the Treasury, had then also returned to his old army position. Now, Wilkinson continued again to serve in the army while also spending a lot of time in these years creating some fairly hostile feelings against the United States, both among the Spanish who uh, controlled the Mississippi River Valley, as we talked about, and also the Native Americans who actually lived there. He worked against the survey of the U.S. border that had been initiated by contract and actually managed to delay uh, the thing for several months, while also sending one of his own guys out to survey areas west of the Mississippi River. Why did he do that? Well, again, we will get back to this. However, um, eventually he was transferred during the Quasi War with France down to the southern frontier and uh, put in third of almost a third of the U.S. Army. Um, because he was charged with establishing a reserve corps in case war should break out with France. Now, why would war break out with France? Well, at the time, this was not the France of Louis XVI anymore. This was the France of the Revolutionary Directory, and America and them had some arguments. Uh, the war, of course, never, never came about. So instead, uh, he busied himself in around 1800... Uh, political election by allying himself with uh, uh, Hamilton to make sure that the right person won the um, presidential election. In this particular case, it should be anyone but the president already in power, namely um, John Adams. It should absolutely not be Aaron Burr, who 
um, both Wilkinson and Hamilton, of course, d- detested. So the possibility had to be basically Thomas Jefferson, because not that Wilkinson liked Jefferson very much. In fact, he seemed to have liked absolutely no one. But it should absolutely not be Aaron Burr, because Jefferson was, at least in Wilkinson's opinion, an honest man. And, of course, it ended up being Jefferson by a single electoral vote basically. Of course, the way the election system worked back then meant that whoever came second in the election would be vice president, so that's how Aaron Burr ended up with that particular thing. And, of course, Burr and Hamilton had their own story, which I hardly need to basically tell here. Now, after the election, Hamilton stepped down from the army, making Wilkinson by default again senior officer of the United States Army, making him commander of the United States Army, and he held that title up until 1812. So yeah, he did manage to actually do that. Um, he continued at first just to serve uh, and rebuild up the uh, American military presence in what is today Tennessee and Kentucky to guard against any possible French attacks. But with the San Ildefonso Treaty, which basically allowed uh, the Mississippi uh, Valley area to be transferred to France and then uh, the American purchase of it the next year, which doubled the size of the United States, a new position was open for Wilkinson because he was basically uh, promoted as the military commandant of this area to support the local governor. Now, do you remember me saying that Aaron Burr and James Wilkinson were personal enemies? Well, they were. Do you also remember me saying that James Wilkinson was basically a fairly despicable character? Well, he also were. Uh, So in 1804 and around 1805, not one to let personal feelings get in the way of a good prophet, Wilkinson now started conspiring with Aaron Burr, the vice president of all people, to basically steal the western part of the Louisiana Territory, basically everything on the western side of the Mississippi River that that America had bought, and create a new country there with either himself or Burr in command. Um, Unfortunately for him, fortunately for the the United States and probably the history of the world, if not the Native Americans of North America, uh, he couldn't really gain any local support for the thing. And when he started to fear he would be found out, he went directly to Thomas Jefferson and relayed the entire plot to him while basically saying that Aaron Burr was the mastermind and he himself had only been part of it so to get information. Now, most people even at the time basically felt that that seemed unlikely, that Wilkinson might very well have been the true mastermind behind the thing. But, you know, anyway, Burr was eventually charged with the crimes of illegal secession of purchased territory. During the trial against Burr, Wilkinson appeared as a witness for the prosecution, and since everyone had basically known that he was in on the plot, at least if not from the st- if not as the mastermind, then at least from the start, this did not exactly uh, endear him to a lot of people. He kept the faith of Thomas Jefferson, however, in one of Jefferson's, shall we say, lesser moments. Now, despite that faith from uh, Thomas Jefferson, he obviously, Wilkinson, couldn't avoid a series of court-martials since he had been an admitted part of the ploy. So whether or not he had been part of it, as he said, just to inform on others or had been a full part of it, that was what those court-martials were supposed to be dealing with. Uh, However, he was found not guilty uh, by reason of lack of evidence. However, of course, his reputation was again heavily damaged amongst everyone who, for some reason, wasn't uh, Thomas Jefferson, who, when the Louisiana district was promoted to territory, appointed Wilkinson as governor there. Already in 1807, however, Wilkinson was removed from his post as governor on the grounds of abuse of power and excessive use of force. So that didn't go well. Um, He was replaced by Meriwether Lewis. Yes, the uh, Lewis of Lewis and Clark fame. And of course, Wilkinson was not happy about that, uh, as he was definitely not 
a fan of Lewis already and certainly wasn't after this. There are some historians who might who even think that Wilkinson might have been behind uh, Lewis's rather mysterious death in 1809. However, no suspicion against Wilkinson was ever brought forward in that time, not even by his enemies. However, he at least did spend a lot of time, you know, bad-mouthing Lewis publicly. However, the um, fallout from the Burr hearing and Jefferson no longer being president meant that the new president, Madison, wasn't a big fan of having a senior officer of the army, someone who might have been a traitor. So a series of investigation was carried out in Congress in 1810, and in 1811 a new court-martial was ordered against Wilkinson, but once again he was found not guilty by reason of lack of evidence. So, 1812, and the War of 1812 broke out between the United States and England, and Wilkinson, still senior officer of the army, which uh, was um, posted as direct commander of New Orleans and thus in command of the Southern Department of uh, Defenses. However... Very shortly after, he was even promoted to Major General, despite Madison's um, distrust of him. This might actually just have been a way to uh, spite Mr. Wilkinson, because almost at the same time, the former Secretary of War, Henry Dearborn, was promoted to Senior Major General of the United States Army, a title invented for Dearborn specifically by Henry Madison, who then could uh, justify appointing Dearborn as the uh, supreme commander of all United States land forces and deny that title to Wilkinson just because Madison didn't trust him and really, really didn't like him. Uh, Wilkinson was instead made responsible for the defense of Mobile, uh, or Mobile, or however you pronounce that. I have heard a lot of pronunciations of that town, from, including from various people in America, in what was then known as Spanish West Florida, which of course would eventually become Southern Alabama. He was then promoted north to the uh, Canadian sector of the war, where he commanded a couple of battles uh, in losing affairs against the British and also failed miserably in an attempt to take Montreal, at which point he was removed from active duty while being investigated and court-martialed for incompetence. Once more, he was acquitted, because of course he was, but he had to leave the army in disrepute for the final time. This has led to the... Um, rather wonderful quote about him by the historian Robert Lecky, which who called him, to a certain degree a bit unfairly, a general who never won a battle but never lost a court-martial. So, yeah, that's the thing. So, in 1816, Wilkinson published his memoirs, and after the death of his daughter uh, that we talked about earlier, he eventually left for Mexico where he tried to persuade the Mexican government to grant him an extremely large tract of land in what is modern-day Texas where he would found a separate country that had nothing to do with the United States and could function as a buffer state between the growing power of the U.S. and Mexico who had only just managed to win its independence from Spain. While the Mexicans dithered and discussed this, he eventually died in Mexico City at the age of 68 and was buried there. So yeah, that was the story about James Wilkinson. So um, what the, um, what's the thing about the American traitor I was talking about? Well, I hope you guys remember the trip back in 1787 where he talked with the local Spanish governor of... Uh, what was the Mississippi River Valley basically to get those trade concessions for Kentucky t territory because <laughs> that was more to that trip than meets the eye. Now, several times during his life, uh, Wilkinson had been accused of working with the Spanish. Um, nothing was ever proven and of course, as you know, he managed to somehow keep the loyalty of both George Washington until his death and Thomas Jefferson's up until Jefferson was no longer president. But again, there was still some, you know, are you sure he doesn't work with Spain? He was the one who wanted to take Kentucky over and join with the Spanish. Well, 
1854, which was about 30 years after Wilkinson's death, part of his correspondence with the Mexican governor, Esteban Miro, was published, and by that it was made uh, abundantly clear that not only had he been working with the Spa Spanish, but since, 17, since the 1787 trip, he had actually been a Spanish citizen. He had renounced his U.S. citizenship, declared his loyalty to the Spanish crown in writing, become a paid agent of Spain as agent number 13, and had basically been spending the rest of his life, at least as far as the Spanish were concerned, working on their behalf inside the United States. Yes, including all the years when he was commander of the United States Army. So take that, Benedict Arnold, to be perfect, to be perfectly frank. Now, some might, of course, indicate that he wasn't really all that interested in Spain. He was probably more interested in his own gain and basically trying to create a land or a territory where he could be the commander in chief and probably ruler and dictator because that wouldn't fly in America. But yeah, for. More than 40 years, uh, almost 40 years, James Wilkinson, general of the American army, commander of several mo important military posts, uh, the um, mover and shaker of the presidential election of 1800, had been a Spanish citizen and paid traitorous agent against the United States of America. I want to say that I'm actually somewhat impressed. Again, he was a thoroughly despicable character. Plotting against everyone who was above him, being rather unpleasant to those who was below him, corrupt, venile, venal, sorry, with using excessive force and basically just a very, very, very unpleasant person. Yet somehow he managed to keep the trust of the people that was most important for keeping him in power in the United States. Hell, as I said, he took, of course, the pay of a United States brigadier and later major general while also uh, receiving a $57,000 pension by the governor of Spain. Uh, you know, Spanish North America. $57,000 and we're talking the late 1700s here. Whatever else, you can truly say that the man was skilled at what he does. He was described by Frederick Turner, the historian, as the most consummate artist in, the, in treason that the American nation has ever possessed. And I am blindsided still to this day by the fact that Benedict Arnold, who basically saved America several times during the Civil War and only pissed off because the rest of America treated him rather badly, has become a byword for treason, while no one remembers Wilkinson, who, well, honestly did, in the end, a lot more damage to the country than Arnold ever got close to. So, yeah. James Wilkinson, the quintessential American traitor that no one knows about. Well, that was it. James Wilkinson. I hope you enjoyed that, all my American friends. <laughs> well, if not enjoyed, then at least enjoyed hearing the story about something you probably didn't know and a person that you can now spit on uh, his memory whenever you have a chance to, well, basically spit over your shoulder. Spit on James Wilkinson because he bloody well deserves it. Um, yeah, I mean... There's very little to say about him, as I've already mentioned. Some people discuss whether or not he actually worked completely for Spain during all those years, or if he was simply hedging his bets, you know, working for the Americans officially, working for Spain semi-officially, basically working for himself, which seems very probable, to be perfectly honest. But, yeah, James Wilkinson. I shall return with more videos, probably about America, at least for another couple of weeks, until I go there for the Kilroy Free Speech event, which I can only uh, hope all of you will come uh, to see me at, insofar as anyone has any money to go to Phoenix. You can check out the website, you can buy your tickets, you can do everything. Yes, I know this is not my usual finish, but I am actually rather worried about 
free speech right now, both in America and the rest of the world, see the Count Dankula matter and several other things, and I might actually even be speaking at the convention, so yeah, please come join us there. But anyway, until next time, I have been The Sage, and I wish you all a very happy day.